Hello everyone and welcome to the channel. My name's Ben and you're watching Be Brave Astro. In this video, we're going to be hopefully capturing Mars at opposition. It's January the 15th. Technically, opposition is tomorrow, but that doesn't matter too much. And also, hopefully, maybe even capture Jupiter's Great Red Spot just after 11 p.m. If we have time, we'll also point the 14-inch Dobsonian at the Moon to capture some close-up views of its craters. Now, this is all if everything goes right. Of course, with astronomy, things are unpredictable and we never quite know what may go right or wrong. Also, the forecast for the seeing isn't very good tonight, but I don't have any other time to photograph Mars. When the planets are at opposition, this is a perfect time to photograph or have a look at them up close. They're at their biggest and brightest they will appear during their cycle. Mars is at opposition around every 26 months, so the next opposition will be in February in 2027. So if you want to see Mars up close, now is your time. In terms of what you will see or capture of Mars, it varies as Mars changes and rotates. You may or may not see the ice caps and the details on the surfaces will change depending on when you photograph it. The rotation of Mars is roughly the same time as Earth, so it does spin pretty quick. We can time lapse it and you'll be able to see it rotating. Also something magical we will see tonight is the alignment of most of the planets in the night sky. We'll be able to see Venus, Saturn, Jupiter, Mars and the Moon all lined up. Neptune and Uranus will be there too, but you won't be able to easily see them without a telescope. So let's get the 14-inch Dobsonian set up and cool down, ready for tonight's visual and photographing session. I've only photographed Mars once ever, so I'm really eager to get a better, closer photo. As I say, though conditions aren't looking too good, but we can't be too picky here in the UK. Clear skies with good seeing are really rare. They might only happen a few times a year, and unfortunately I've been really unwell with the flu so I haven't been able to get out recently so I'm just happy to get back out with the big telescope anyway with that in mind let's get it set up I absolutely love this time of day. The blue hour just after sunset is always so beautiful. You can see Venus shining away brightly up there. And then we've got Jupiter up there. Anyway, let's cut to a time lapse, a montage of getting this telescope up and ready. And I'll see you in a bit. So the setup we're going to be using to capture the planet is going to be a Skywatcher 14 inch Dobsonian, a ZWO 585 color camera, a Teleview 3x Barlow and a ZWO ADC. So I'm just going to go hook the power up. I'm going to be using a Jackery power bank, which is really helpful for astronomy and we're gonna get collimated and aligned. As you can see just from the breath coming out of my mouth, it's really cold tonight, but um, hopefully that means some good clear skies, fingers crossed. So I'm just taking the eyepiece out and I'm now putting in the 585 camera with the ADC. I've already got the three times uh, Teleview Barlow in there and so I'm just adding the rest of the imaging train. OK, 
Okay, so I've just got the camera hooked up to my computer just here. I'm going to be using SharpCap 4.1 um, and we're going to be pointing at Jupiter first and capturing a couple of minute exposures and taking as many as we can and then we're going to stack them tomorrow probably and see how they come out. So I'm going to connect my camera and get focused. So we're up in capturing some frames on Jupiter. I'm doing two minute exposures and I'm doing 10 of them. The scene conditions aren't great tonight, uh, but it's always, like I say, it's always amazing to get out photographing the planets up close. As you can see, my field of view with, with these planets is just incredible. So I've just finished up some imaging time on Jupiter, which has been amazing. The conditions aren't perfect, but um, we can still see some really good detail on the bands. Mars has just appeared around my house, so I'm gonna slew the Dobsonian to Mars and start capturing my first data of the red planet. I cannot wait. I really hope I can resolve some details and capture those polar caps. So let's get the telescope pointing at Mars. Oh wow, I can actually see details. This is crazy. I can see the polar cap. I can see a black big band se separating two large orange planes. And yeah, I'm so excited to see this final image. Mars at opposition. Wow. We just started capturing our frames. I'm really excited to see this, seriously. I can't wait to show you what's on my screen. This is incredible getting your first views of the planets is just the feeling is unlike anything else when you first see your first galaxy pop up when you do your deep sky imaging when you get your first views of a planet on your screen or through the eyepiece it, it's just you're looking deep into space and you're seeing it with your eyes in real life it's incredible and i really love bringing you all along on this journey that is part of the fun and why I make these videos and I really hope you're enjoying yourself. If you like astronomy and you like these videos of capturing the night sky, please do feel free to subscribe and hit the like button. It helps the algorithm and it really helps me continue to make these videos. I really do appreciate you all so much and yeah, I can't wait to see how this comes out. So I'm going to capture a whole load of frames, um, as many as I can. And then if there's time, I'm gonna go back to Jupiter at just after 11 p.m. to capture the Great Red Spot as well. If that happens, tonight will just be one of those amazing nights and I'm just so, so happy. Anyway, let's see what the morning brings and I'll carry on going through the night. Well, I just came to photograph uh, Uranus, but unfortunately, my secondary mirror has dewed over uh, this is the downside of these big Dobsonians. So I've got out my trusty hairdryer and I'm going to blow gently some uh, medium warm air over the secondary mirror and hopefully we can clear the mirror up and get back to photographing the night sky. So let's get to uh, disturbing the peace. <laughs> hopefully my neighbours don't mind too much and we can hopefully clear up this dew on the mirror. Ah, oh, who said astronomy was easy? <laughs> As I say, astrophotography and astronomy isn't easy, but for every amazing image you've ever seen, that astrophotographer has had to overcome hurdles to achieve that photo. Even through a really big telescope like the one I'm using, Uranus and Neptune are so distant and so faint, they appear as small, insignificant blobs through the telescope. However, they're still amazing to capture, knowing how far away they are in our solar system.
So the moon is rising right now and uh, maybe I'll point the telescope towards the moon in a bit after I've captured the planets again. Wow, just look at the detail. I cannot believe the conditions held out tonight. The performance with these big Dobsonians is just amazing. Wow, look at the night sky. Orion, Jupiter, Pleiades. Wow, Cassiopeia. Draw the galaxies up there somewhere. Look at the detail on the bands, even on the northern hemisphere, just up here. You can see some faint detail. We can see the great red spot just over there. It is amazing. The 15th of January was just one of those nights. I was having such a good time. Despite the freezing temperatures and the damp conditions, I stayed out until 2.30 in the morning. I captured literally millions of frames. The planets can be captivating and the reason why so many of us get interested in astronomy. If you're interested in getting into planetary, links will be in the description to the equipment used in this video. So hello and welcome to the next day. We've got our files over onto our better computer inside. The Astro laptop outside isn't the fastest one and my desktop inside is much more powerful. This will aid us in being able to stack and process our files that we've captured. We captured lots and lots of files. We're gonna go through a couple of programs and show you very quickly what actually goes into creating our final image. This is where a personal preference comes into it and where the image is really made. So let's jump to the computer and start processing our files. Okay, so the first program I'm gonna be using is PIP. PIP is really good at stabilizing our footage and will allow us to early sort out the good frames from the bad. So I'm batch processing all of my Mars files. We have 955,000 frames to process, which is a lot. And we're filtering the best 10% and we're also stabilizing our footage. We're outputting these in these SER or SER formats to keep the best detail. Once these files have been processed, we can open them into the second program, which will be the very popular Auto Stacker. So we go over to Auto Stacker 4. We can then drag and drop our files that have been created by PIP straight over into Auto Stacker. And this will then allow us to stack our frames and use the best frames to create the clearest image. So first up, we're going to click Analyze and it's going to analyze all of the frames in that individual file. So it plots this curve and this lets us know the best to worst frames. We always want to choose roughly the best frames above the central line here. So I'm going to hold down Control and click and this will select the best frames above that threshold. So we're going to stack the best 17%. Let's make that 15%. Okay, so once we've done that, we're gonna place an AP grid. These are alignment points, and this will make sure that Auto Stacker accurately aligns all the frames and doesn't have any weird artifacts. So once we've done that, we can then hit stack and patiently wait. This shouldn't take too long, because I've got a fast computer and the resolution isn't too high. Okay, so we've got our stacked image. So we can find that stacked file, and then we can open this in the next program, which will be wavelet sharpening. One of the most popular programs is Registack 6, but in this video, I'm going to be trying out a new program called Astro Surface. This has been out for a few years and has actually got a really nice wavelet sharpening filter. 
So we're going to open up our stacked image in Astro Surface, then we're going to go over to Wavelet and then start our Wavelet sharpening. We're going to go from one, two, three, four, five, and then apply our Wavelet sharpening. Now this part is truly personal preference. What some people like and what some people don't is personal preference. And really this is where the image is made. Some people like to go quite heavy with the sharpening, others like to go less, some people go very strong with noise reduction, and really I like just a middle ground that still looks relatively natural. Again, it's all personal preference, there isn't really any right or wrong, and it's just making sure we don't go too overboard where it's all blocky and looks a bit fake. So let's get to doing that now. As we bring out the detail on our image, we can really see all of the different areas of the Martian surface. This is one of the most exciting parts about imaging. We can reveal so much detail, and look, we can even see these faint, darker and lighter areas. This is the second time I have ever photographed Mars, and I am just amazed at what we're seeing. It's incredible. Look at the polar cap, look at these amazing details. It's just incredible. Okay, I'm pretty happy with my image, so let's get to saving it. I'm gonna save this in another file so we don't lose track of where we're at. And now we've got our image saved. I'm gonna do this to all the other stacks and then we'll see how those come out. I'm also gonna work on the Jupiter image and the Uranus one. We'll see you in a minute with the final images. Back to Ben, who's outside. Last night was really amazing. I mean, I love being out with this big Dobsonian, but especially with the amount of planets on view last night, and also just having views through this telescope once more. Seeing Mars at opposition was truly stunning. Getting captures of its polar caps and surface details was something that I never expected just one year ago. If you've got all the way to the end, I really appreciate it and please do hit that like button. And if you're not already subscribed, consider subscribing for more astronomy videos. I managed to capture Mars at various different rotations so we can see different surface details across multiple images. I also captured Uranus, which is not really that interesting, but is always amazing though, knowing you're capturing such a distant planet so deep in the solar system. Even though I'm primarily an astrophotographer, I always make sure to take time to look through the telescope and see these sites with my eyes too. I had a look at Jupiter initially and conditions improved drastically when I finished photographing. I could see the detail on the bands and it's just, just incredible. There's barely any words I can possibly say that put really into perspective how amazing it is looking at planets through a big telescope. I finished up on the moon and getting views of the craters was probably the best part about last night. It was really unexpected. I now know what people mean when they talk about moonwalk views or lunar lander views. The craters at high magnification with three times Barlow and six millimeter eyepiece through a big Dobsonian was just jaw dropping. The conditions were quite stable. Usually when I use high magnification, there's too much turbulence to really see much detail. But last night, the opposite was true. I could almost feel like I could reach out and touch those craters. As I say, last night was amazing and I'm just so glad to have managed to capture Mars at opposition. Usually when these celestial events happen in the UK, there's cloud or something else going on, so we can't do it. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this video as much as I've enjoyed going out and doing astronomy. I hope it's inspired at least one of you to get out there and to keep looking at the night sky. Anyway, as always, my name's Ben, you've been watching Bebo Astro, and remember to keep looking up.